Good morning, friends. Thanks for being with me on the reflection today. Let's just pray and get ourselves centered in the love of God together. Now, come Holy Spirit. God, we thank you that you are the Prince of Peace. Our world just so desperately needs your peace and we celebrate and receive that that is why you came. So would you help us to just relax into your love and your grace this morning and to hear the truth such that it would just change our hearts. Come Lord Jesus. Amen. So the scripture on peace that was brought to my mind as I just have been meditating on it a bit this week was from John chapter 14 and it's verse 27. And it says, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. I learned this verse in the NIV translation and I want to read that to you as well. It says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Peace as a gift is just really encouraging to me today. You know, it's not something that I have to earn. It's not something that I have to find within myself or work hard to maintain by reading self-help books or just trying harder. I just love that this scripture tells me that the peace of God actually is a gift from God. And he says, I don't give as the world gives. And that phrase has been just turning over in my mind and heart lately. Um, and I think it just feels significant on two levels. One is that this gift that Jesus is offering is a gift of our minds and our hearts, right? It says a peace of mind and heart. And that can really only be acquired through relationship with Jesus. It's not in acquiring more stuff, more money, more power. Uh, it's not even acquired by, you know, engaging in the traditional symbols of Christmas time, the, the happiness and the togetherness that's represented on the commercials and even in our cookie baking or our gift wrapping. Um, it comes from being loved by the creator of the universe. And here's the other piece I've really been chewing on. The gift of peace that God is offering is not something outside of himself that Jesus acquired and then donated. The peace that we get actually originates with him. He is the Prince of Peace. And it came into the world through his own flesh as a baby being born. And then he carried around that peace in his person on the earth. And ultimately, he died on the cross to make his peace our own. 
And I just think that's interesting. That's the leaving part of this verse, right? He says, it's my peace I leave with you because he's going away in his body. So he's leaving us his peace. And, you know, the Bible talks about how that is an inheritance that he's giving us. And I think about the legal aspects of, you know, what happens when someone leaves their estate to their next of kin or to a relative that they will it to. And it just hit me that it's possible to leave something and never have the recipient um, take hold of it, never have it be given to the recipient. But here, you know, Jesus says both, I leave my peace and I give my peace. And it sort of hit me that he's like the executor of his own estate, so to speak. He's, he's doing the leaving and the giving. And that is what actually makes the gift really secure. And then beyond the work of Jesus, it's it's the Holy Spirit that implants and maintains the peace in our hearts. Like, I don't have to work at it. God has literally taken it upon himself to give me peace now at Christmas time and really always. And so, from Matthew 6, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. And if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. Peace to you, friends. We'll catch you next time.